सर प्लीज चेक योर कैमरा वंस डॉक्टर हाशमी सर Uh, I would just want to check that if I'm audible to all of you and visible also, kindly revert back uh, in chat. Uh, I request the audience to please update. Am I audible or not? Can I uh, can I get some reward back in the chat from the audience? Yeah, so thank you so much, Dr. Vidhi and Dr. Uma. Thank you so much, Dr. Neha and Ritu Ma'am and Dharm Bharmik sir. So we are ready to go. I just want to request Dr. Hashmi sir to please refresh your page and join again. I think there is some issue with the connectivity. Sir, please refresh, reload the page once. so before uh, we will uh, by the time uh, dr hashmi sir and our speaker joins us so i just want to introduce you all and welcome heart from the core of my heart to the day four of this webinar series this is a revolutionary webinar series which we have organized on an international level with afghanistan homeopathic medical association ahma and homeopathy 360 we are glad Uh, on behalf of homeopathy 360 i would say we are glad that we have uh, uh, collaborated and we have got this opportunity to collaborate with ahma on international level and got experts on our platform from all over the world so i hope everybody is very much excited to learn from all of them and me myself are in, is enjoying like uh, anything since past three days and i am hoping for a great session today as well as the upcoming days till 15th of october we will be having new speakers and very great experts i would say from the uh, for the upcoming days as well but before i begin i want to thank mr uh, master hanemin uh, for giving us this opportunity to become a homeopath and giving us this science so that we can become what we are today as well as uh, the organizing committee of this uh, webinars uh, webinar series i want to thank mr manish jain the director of bjn publishers for giving us this platform as well as collaborating with us uh, to for this session and i also want to thank dr ubadullah alashmi sir the founder and president of afghanistan homeopathic medical association ncp lmhi international and dr professor dr kavita r chandak ma'am who is the member board of director of ahma indian chapter and also working as a professor and hod in the department of repertory at pd jain homeopathic medical college parbani so we are glad that we all have a uh, great support from all these people and i dr yashika aroda feel so glad and privileged enough to be the part of this webinar series and the coordinator as well as the moderator of the whole series so thank you everybody uh, thank you so much uh, for being with us and coming to this platform uh, for joining us and before, uh, without wasting any more time i just want to request you guys to please visit www.homeopathy360.com for all the updates related to homeopathy and also you can submit your articles for publications your research papers and every anything you want to promote in the fraternity we will be glad to work upon it as well as promote it through our website and our heritage journal as well as anything you want any support you can just ping us on the given email ids so thank you so much and also i would like to introduce you about ahma that is afghanistan homeopathic medical association which was founded in 2018 as the first afghanistan homeopathic association and they 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 are the afghanistan's leading homeopathic charity who is committed to the promotion and practice of homeopathy they are trying their level best to make homeopathy available to everyone as well as collaborate the international and national organizations working all over the world for the sake of homeopathy 
together on one platform as a united uh, as a united group united homeopaths together so they they have they they have a target to unite all the associations all the organizations working for this upliftment betterment of homeopathy together so they are committed to provide high quality homeopathic care for everyone who needs it uh, through their clinics as well as they have they they are working hard to share accessible information about homeopathy through different social portals you can visit the facebook for the same ahma page as well as ahma uh, ahma uh, group so you can visit and follow us there as well as on telegram and whatsapp so they their main aim is to prom promote the research oriented homeopathy and uh, Uh, together with how they can uh, help the in the treatment section so they 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 are working all over it so we are glad that we have all them all of them here but before i begin the session and introduce you to the speaker i want to request dr ubedullah al ashmi sir sir you're not visible there is some internet issue please refresh your page once dr hashmi can you hear me I think I need to connect. Just give me a minute. I will uh, connect to Dr. Hashmi and uh, then ask him to update, uh, refresh the page. so by the time they they join and reload the page uh, so we will uh, i'll just introduce you about the great man who will be joining us and teaching us about the lifestyle disorders in homeopathy he is uh, one of the legends i would say and an expert in this in the um, who has uh, opted homeopathy uh, uh, so we, we he's an inspiration for many of the afghanistan doctors because uh, he has opted homeopathy uh, after uh, after being an allopath so it's it's a it's a, another it's an achievement actually so dr mohammad karim sir is msc and mbbs bsc lead manager trainer clinician and lecturer visiting lecturer for eh ethics and scientific writing professional english and also the former undp as shdp coast uh, php's research uh, provincial coordinator also as a former mmrc a mental health and disability officer trainer and also the vice president of afghanistan homeopathic medical association we have him here uh, dr uh, uh, ubedullah lashmi sir uh, uh, will be introducing can you please uh, speak something uh, hashmi sir i think he left again yeah so he'll be joining us uh, by the time i'll introduce you about uh, the uh, about dr mohammad karim sir so he is uh, he has served as focal point or trainer for mental health and disability he has participated in meetings and various with various stakeholders and also uh, he has been uh, he has undertaken other tasks as requested by uh, the director at mental health and mental health and disability as the post of mental health and disability officer he has an experience of being a great speaker great orator a good time manager and is an expert uh, as well as presented so many papers internationally and nationally uh, the main being uh, uh, the many of them you can uh, quote as training of mental health for mds working in primary health care and many other presentations all over the world so he has also participated in the covid-19 prevention strategies in afghanistan held at amc Ab uh, kabul afghanistan so we have him here um, i think sir can you please join us give me a second we'll uh, we'll just start the session
Just give me a minute, sir is joining. Uh, please have patience. Okay, okay, I joined. Oh, joined. She yes. says we joined. We are about to join. Yeah, sir, please on your video as well. Thank you so much. Sir. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so over to you. Uh, please uh, introduce, a, uh, say a few words about Dr. Karim and then we'll start the session. People are already waiting. Okay, all right, all right. Tiene más de tres antes el fondo. Sí. No, please begin. Start. Yes, please. Please begin, sir. I already said my part. Okay, may I begin now? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Uh... Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Yashika, uh, BJN and uh, Homopathy 360 for coordinating and arranging this uh, international revolutionary uh, webinar for understanding the homopathy and different cases in, uh, uh, to all participants. And thank you all participants for joining us in this uh, webinar series. And uh, today we are really happy and uh, I'm so glad and so lucky to have Dr. Kareem uh, with us. And Dr. Mohammed Karim is the MBBS doctor. He is reverted to homopathy. Uh, Afghanistan based, the first homopathic, uh, the conventional doctor has been reverted to homopathy. He is a best researcher and assistant professor of one of the university here. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is uh, also a uh, visiting uh, professor and visiting assistant professor in, in different universities here in Afghanistan. And he is uh, working uh, uh, with the uh, organization which is uh, uh, controlling more than 18 provinces of Afghanistan and health issues and they have a uh, very good projects and uh, I'm so uh, uh, once again I'm really happy to have Dr. Karim and uh, I will let him to introduce himself in details and uh, uh, to go forward as uh, uh, to uh, give you the lecture on the homopathy uh, and uh, lifestyle, lifestyle and thank you so much all participants let's join Dr. Mohammed Karim. Thank you, Dr. Ubaidullah Al Hashmi. Uh, on behalf of AHMA, Afghanistan uh, Homeopathic Medical Association, uh, I'm presenting uh, my today's uh, webinar about homeopathy and lifestyle disorders. As Dr. Hashmi uh, talked more about me, I think there's enough now. 
to introduce myself more, what I'm, what I am, and what I'm doing. So I think uh, I will tell you in a brief that uh, recently I'm working with uh, an international NGO uh, who is being funded by UN-led projects, uh, funds, and uh, WHO. Uh, in uh, more than uh, 15 uh, provinces of Afghanistan, we are uh, implementing our projects, health projects. So I'm working as a senior monitoring and evaluation with them. Uh, and uh, as a visiting faculty member of Kabul University, uh, which is an international university, uh, public sector university, and in some private universities also. So I think we have to start our uh, today's presentation, Dr. Yashika. If you want to say something else to our colleagues. Thank you so much, sir. I already uh, said my part. Uh, you can, uh, they, they'll be watching in the recording also. So, sir, we can start with the presentation. Uh, uh, it's all set. <clears throat> Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, get started. Hello everyone, are you hearing me? Yes, I can hear you. You can begin the session. Okay, thanks uh, Dr. Yashika. And once again, uh, Homeopathy 360 and BJ, uh, B. Jane, publishers of pharmaceutical company uh, for uh, cooperating about this webinar. So once again, thanks for from all of you. So I will start my uh, today's presentation. Uh, Dr. Yashika, if you have to move this first slide. Uh, because this is introductory slide about Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, Ministry of Public Health, Afghanistan Homeopathic Medical Association. So, okay. What is the role of homeopathy in Afghanistan and how it will be flourished in uh, upcoming future? And uh, what are the obstacles we are facing here in Afghanistan to groom this kind of uh, treatment uh, plan here. So I will start from uh, homeopathy in a scenario of Afghanistan with the Association of Homeopathy 360 or BG, former. So uh, we move further. Uh, this slide is about Afghanistan's capital, Kabul, and the homeopaths like Dr. Hashmi who's the founder of AHMA, and I'm the vice president of AHMA, working here in Kabul province. Uh, how is the situation with homeopathy in Kabul, especially in Afghanistan? Because uh, now, uh, luckily, we have uh, a lot of homeopaths all around the country, uh, starting from Kabul to the lowest level, which is called remote area or white area, mean where the people have no access to health facilities. So luckily we have homeopaths who are giving treatments to patients at community levels as well as upper levels. So this is the picture of Capital Kabul, the tomb of uh, ex-President uh, Zahir Shah's cousin uh, that's near to uh, Jada and behind that is the whole Kabul being seen. So moving from this slide, coming uh, to my introduction, I think uh, Dr. Hashmi and Dr. Yashika, you introduced a lot, but again, I will introduce in this slide, this is an introductory slide, that I'm the vice president of AHMA and also working along with Afghanistan Medical Council, which is a regulatory body for all health personals who are working in allopathic system of treatment or uh, homeopathic system of treatment, along with them as a telemedicine or electronic health program assistant coordinator. And uh, rightly doing my job, as I mentioned earlier, uh, with other agency, 
for Afghanistan development uh, as a senior monitoring and evaluation officer, as well as visiting lecturer in Pakhtia University, located in Pakhtia province, visiting lecturer in Kabul University, uh, delivering lectures about environmental health and academic scientific writing, as well as visiting physician at Fais Curative Hospital Kabul. I will uh, mention again, academician, clinician research, I think it's a lot now, so, but I also got training in mental health and as a trainer, I'm working also in different uh, platforms, at different platforms, as well as I got training in ICU and now as a trainer, uh, a little bit whenever there's necessary, I give trainings and former hospital director of Paktia COVID-19 hospital. So you can reach to my email and to our website and to my phone number. Moving next. What is Afghanistan Homeopathic Medical Association and what it wants and what are the objectives and missions of this association? Because whenever in any country or in any part of the globe, when their association develops, it has some objectives, some missions to tackle those hindrances or obstacles at the ground level. So like this Afghanistan Homeopathic Medical Association is also a non-governmental and non-profit organization serving the nation with the experts in the field of homeopathic medicine and is committed to replicate the wheel around, present around the world to benefit the nation. So the presence of AHME will ensure the representation of homeopathic medical system in Afghanistan with the reliable expertise to be used for further development and promotion of the system of the country and globe. So this association has been found for the support and unity of homeopathic professions around the world as well as other allopathic brothers who are working in allopathic uh, system of treatment. Okay, going further, mission mentioned earlier, the mission of AHMA regulates homeopaths around the globe, around the country to ensure safe, ethical and competent homeopathic care for the people of Afghanistan and worldwide or globally, to provide cost-effective, safe and qualitative curative system, improving the quality of life through homeopathic system of medicine accordingly. Now coming towards the in a right point after a long introduction, uh, coming to the right point that today we have to discuss uh, about homeopathy and lifestyle disorders. So first of all, as uh, this is my first appearance and no coming towards homeopathy, so this will be my new touch to this system. So I hope that other colleagues who are working earlier in the system of treatment will cooperate uh, as accordingly uh, during the, uh, our presentation uh, session. So first of all, uh, we have to know about uh, what is a complementary and alternative medicine system. Uh, we have to see this, oversee this, or overview this. Uh, that can or complementary and alternative medicine. That is a group of disease, diverse medical and healthcare systems, practices and products, which are not generally considered to be part of conventional medicine or modern medicine, or you have to say, in other words, they say uh, science-based medicine, though this is also science-based medicine. So we have five domains to discuss can, uh, complementary and alternative medicine. Uh, in first domain, whole medical systems, which is comprised of naturopathy, homeopathy, Ayurveda, traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, second one, biology-based practices in which herbal products will be used in our different uh, prescriptions, probiotics, vitamins, and energy-based medicine in which spiritual healing, you have to heal a person uh, through spiritual uh, you know, spiritual concepts, spiritual um, saying something else, which uh, uh, come or relieve, give relief to the mind and body. Shiro, in Chinese, 
and distant healing. Uh, number four, manipulating and body-based practices in with massage, osteopathic manipulation, and chiropractics manipulation. Uh, number fifth, mind-body interventions in which yoga, hypnosis, meditation, traditional. So yeah, so we have to we have to pick out homeopathy, not to discuss other uh, medical uh, system of treatments. Uh, so taking out homeopathy, what is homeopathy? Because all other know, but so as this is a touch, an introductory touch to homeopathy, as homeopathy, all of you know, is a Greek word means similar, and pathos means suffering or disease. It's a well-described scientifically based system of approaching health and disease. Scientific because the insights are based on reproducible experiments. It means we are doing a lot of experiments to prove something else towards its reality uh, up to that death point. So it is a well described because from these observations which we have uh, after doing our experiments, uh, a number of precise basic fundamental rules became evident. And then we have to make a law about that product or that kind of treatment. Uh, in other words, we have to say it's an alternative medical practice in which extremely dilute amounts of certain natural substances are used to treat various ailments or diseases. Like in these two pictures, I mm, brought these two pictures here. You can see uh, both of them uh, are showing the homeopathic uh, drugs. Mm, that is, a, those are convent, those are natural from natural substances and all others being made. What are the principles of homeopathy? Every system has its own principles, like conventional or modern medicine system has its own principles, Yunani has its own principles, all others are its own principles. But like this, homeopathy is also having its own principles. It's a system of medicine based on the principle of like cure likes. Like, and you have to say, similia similibus curenta, uh, mean similar, treat similar. A like cures like. In this kind of system, the smallest possible dose is used against disease to produce a proper response against that disease. So, how the homeopathic system originated. You know, if we have to go back in early, uh, early times, uh, you have to say in ancient times, we, we can see in Indian subcontinent or Chinese culture writings, over 300 years ago, the findings of homeopathy will be seen. You can see there in literature and different homeopaths at that time treated people to uh, treated people to cure from diseases so if we have to come uh, uh, to the time of hypocrites our galen in the second century and paracelsius in 16th century we can find uh, we can find uh, the marks of homeopathy also available there in that literature but if we come towards the modern system, in modern period or modern time, a research-based person named uh, Dr. Samuel Hahnemann, who was a German physician and scientist, he developed homeopathy in 1755 to 1843. I will say it like this, that Dr. Samuel Hahnemann was that person who got his degree in medicine in conventional medicine or you have to say in allopathic system of medicine but why he turned towards homeopathy because he got some new things in this kind of treatment as this kind of treatment is suitable cheaper and very accessible to all the community members against those diseases which prevail in them so he grew up in Mason in Germany received his medical as I mentioned in Ellington in 79 and died um, as a millionaire in Paris in 1843. Not to people say that what is the future of homeopath? 
Homeopath is also having a good future, a very talented person of the community who really serves the community members in reality. So we should not disappoint and we should not uh, discourage people coming from uh, a conventional system towards this system of science or treatment. Okay, moving next. Dr. Samuel Hahnemann, just a brief introduction about him, that he was a disillusioned first physician or person who was disappointed from conventional system of treatment or modern system of medicine. He used Sincona bark many times, gave preparations of that Sincona bark to family and students to prove against the disease and made diluted medication and remedies. These were the uh, achievements of Dr. Samuel Hahnemann. And today, luckily, we people of this modern world are very thankful to that sincere person who did in real uh, his blessings on humanity uh, for this cheapest and valuable system of treatment accessible to all. So what are the homeopathic regulations? Every system has its own regulations. Like this, homeopathy is also uh, has its own regulations. FDA, Food and Food Drug and Cosmetic Act, uh, Food Drug Administration has made some regulations for homeopathic system of treatment according to the law of 1938. As most medicines of homeopathy are available as OTC over the counter. Drugs are the drugs without prescriptions mean people can access and can purchase from medical store while some buy prescriptions only because an homeopath, a homeopath will understand better to that, not that common person getting medicine from medical store. So FDA drug good manufacturing processor regulates manufacturing, labeling, and distribution. The reference is at the end of the slide. You can see www.fda.government. Mean FDA also proved homeopathy uh, is a good system of treatment, not a very bad. Like people say, it's a. Some people, because I heard from a lot of my colleagues that this is a, uh, you know, not we have to use some rubbish words for this, but they use that this system is not in reality. This system is just based on fake stories. But no, now it is known that this system is truly based on scientific evidence and research. Also, uh, Dr. Horneman developed a Materia Medica. Materia Medica is a book, a reference book for homeopathic medicines, which lists are endless substances used against diseases, different outline uses of those substances and provings from the original books of by Hahnemann, organon of the healing art in 1833, first time published. You can see in this picture, uh, slide that Carolus Linnaeus, who was the French scientist, a French uh, naturalist, who first time classified living organisms into different species based on his classification, it was being further developed by Dr. Samuel Hahnemann. The, he developed a new Materia Medica, no, sorry, Materia Medica developed by him and then Materia Medica Pura, developed by Dr. Hahnemann in the Organ of Healing. And up to modern time, that is called the new Materia Medica. And the reference is at the end of the book, uh, you have to say the book, uh, mm, uh, monogram. Next moving. So what a homeopathic medicine is a very similar. I told you earlier that the principle of similars means similars treat similars are uh, like your likes. Like if a person sneeze comes what uh, having watery eyes means some burning tears and some running nose. Like in these two pictures, you can see one picture is a normal picture of a human face and the other one is an abnormal. Abnormal, why? Because it changed from normal to some different um, you say, shape. Why? Because tears are coming from his eyes due to 
what? Due to some agent. The agent called, in the next slide I will prove it. You see, yes, alien SIPA. So similar means similar, mean alien SIPA onion. We use onion pieces in our daily diets, in our daily cookings, different dishes, because without onion, uh, people say that uh, dish is incomplete, food is incomplete, the, the, you know, the taste of that food is incomplete. So alien SIPA uh, onion, alien SIPA is a scientific name, where alien is a genus, SIPA is a species. So, Alien SIPA, uh, when you have to sneeze, uh, coming watery eyes, runny nose, you use alien SIPA. Alien SIPA produces that symptoms in a healthy person also, like in an unhealthy person. So this means by using alien SIPA, uh, provings or remedies, you can treat a person very well. This is called the homeopathic system of treatment. Next, like you have to see bee, when a bee stings a person, what will happen? You know, swelling will come there, but biting of that, some pink edema, uh, itching pain and some itching pain, which will be, yeah, which will be improved by cold, you know, cold patches and others. So when bee stings a person or a human, some reaction develops inside the body of that human in the form of inflammation, that is swelling and pink edema. So you can treat that by apis malefica. You know, honey bee, mean getting its purings and getting its provings against those symptoms which appear. It means homeopathy is being proved here that similar to its symptoms. Now, full strength is available in conventional system of treatment or medicines, while in homeopathic dilutions are available. So we see and compare both. Like you heard about nitroglycerin. Dr. Yashika, are you hearing me? Dr. Yashika. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell me. Okay. All other audiences are hearing me, mean participants who are. Yes, sir. Uh, Yes, sir, they are able to hear you. Yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good. I think we have to discuss this matter right now. It will be better that we have to take all other participants also take uh, their participation, full participation here. So what is the purpose of nitroglycerin? I mean, uh, for which purpose nitroglycerin is being used in conventional system of treatment? Yeah, Dr. Yashik. Hello. So, uh, audience sir, is requesting to comment on in the chat box, please. Uh, what is the function of nitroglycerin as per you, sir? We uh, if, uh, you can check in the chat. There is no reply yet. Once the reply comes, I'll just inform you. Okay. No, no, no. My, I'm I'm just asking you right now because if audiences are not, I uh, mean, they are not having access to this to audible. Um, uh, just my question is this. Did you hear the name of nitroglycerin? Yeah. What is nitroglycerin? Yes, I, I'll, I'll, I'll explain you. I'll explain it later to all other audiences. But tell me, what is the purpose of nitroglycerin in conventional system of treatment, a modern medicine, an allopathic system of treatment? Okay, so uh, sir, it is usually used for, if you talk about conventional system, it's it's being used for heart, uh, I would say, heart, heart failure and blood uh, pressure, etc. Uh, no, 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 heart, heart, you know, this, it, it's very simple. You know, when a person feels some, my, uh, you know, myocardial attacks, like, you know, heart attack or myocardial infarction, or you have yeah. to say chronic uh, congestive heart failure, CHF, uh, congestive heart disease, chronic heart disease, you have to say, and coronary artery diseases, CAD. You know, when a person feels some angina, angina means discomfort, inside the chest of any human being, sudden, sudden chest pain, which is uh, developing slowly and slowly and slowly and going on towards the left side, and 
then catching the whole left side you know it means the person feels some discomfort which is very unpleasant at that time due to hypertension due to high blood pressure and due to some other risk factors like uh, you know uh, you have to say that uh, uh, fat deposits which are being raised like triglycerides and uh, you know triglycerides and uh, glycerol and all others fatty acids when the amount of these things will be raised they will make some kind of plaque inside the vessels blood vessels arteries you know arteries and at that time some blockage will occur which will which will which will develop a high blood pressure due to that reason and in response of that high blood pressure patient feels very discomfort leading sometime towards death attacks like we have to say heart attack and all other but no nitroglycerin is especially formulated to get under tongue it will be dissolved directly inside the blood and will perform the function of vasodilation mean dilation of vessels you know dilation of vessels and also will regularize the throbbing pain you know very sharp and bad pain bad kind of sounds coming from the heart you know heart beat and headaches so there is a comparison between a conventional medicine and a homeopathic dilution on the other side glonoinum i think if you pronounce it dr yashika yes so glonoinum yes glonoinum that's called glon yeah 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 okay okay so dr javed akhtar is with us from pakistan dr javed akhtar welcome to you if you hear if you can hear me dr javed akhtar yes sir he can you know yeah yeah you uh, but he cannot speak he is from the attendees link good okay so he also uh, told in because the nitroglycerin is especially used to expand the blood vessel right so that the smooth flow of the blood pressure will be developed and the person will be settled towards the normal condition so in homeopathy we have a dilution glonoinum which is especially used for vasodilation heart flashes headache like throbbing pain so these are the things that glonoinum is a very good homeopathic dilution or um, homeopathic medicine uh, as compared to uh, nitroglycerin a conventional medicine because it is used in a very low amount in a very low potency or centimols if if, I, if i'm not wrong about it dr yashika Yes sir yes sir Yeah so this is the difference between these two kinds of uh, um, system of treatment that homeopathy is better than conventional because nitroglycerin as compared to glonoinum having other side effects also but glonoinum have no more side effects than nitroglycerin so it means now we can say uh, we can say openly that homeopathic system of treatment is better than conventional system of treatment are you agree dr yashika yes sir yes coming to the next slide not uh, um, taking more of your time uh, how a homeopathic dilution will be made the procedure uh, we can make from different sources a homeopathic uh medicines like from botanical source um, from different plants uh biological source from different insects and from different animals and mineral source from different minerals so first i will start from mineral source in a mineral source we have to grind the mineral whether that one you know we have to grind the mineral or trituration not trituration and after that the first dilution the first dilution will be made from that while in biological and botanical source 
this is having two uh, categories here. Identification, first of all, you have to identify about that, and then you have to control that uh, remedy or that proving in which alcohol plus ultra pure water. You have to put your botanical or biological source, which you identified, and when you control through what? Through alcohol plus ultra pure water or distilled water. And it will be macerated. A maceration will occur for 21 days. And after that, your mother tincture will be developed. So this is uh, a simple and brief overview of homeopathic medicine uh, preparation. What are homeopathic dilutions? You know, as we uh, discussed that uh, conventional medicines, when they are formulated, they are formulated in grams, milligrams, and mean weight, or you have some mass. But homeopathic medicines are being formulated in the form of dilution or solution, you have to say. Mm, I think if I'm not wrong, we use in homeopathic uh, medicine formulation uh, like alcohol, water based, and third one, if I'm uh, forgetting, Dr. Yashika, third one. Sorry, sir. Third I one, think, three, three. Uh, yes, I sir. think that uh, homeopathic medicines are being formulated. Uh, in three, uh, you have to say uh, from yeah, like centesimal, decimal, and fifty millisimal. No, 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 no. Dilutions. I will talk about dilution. Me, uh, one uh, mean you have to say uh, in uh, ethyl alcohol, purified water, or you have to say uh, you have to say distilled water. And third one, I need to check, sir. I'll just update you in. Okay, okay, we have to move. So homeopathic dilutions will be um, scaled in a centesimal, mean one person dilution. If one C, it means one person dilution, you have to dilute it a suction, succussion, sorry. After one, you have to make two C, two centesimal. And then from two centesimal succussion, one person dilution, then three centesimal. And after three centesimal, you have to put into 30 centesimal. So these are different dilutions for homeopathic drugs. Choosing the dilution, the right dilution for which kind of symptom. If symptoms are local, mean you have some minor symptoms, not so much severe, like eye strain, bee sting, and sore throat. So the most appropriate dilution will be used in low potency. That is C, 6C. 6C means 6 centesimal. While for general symptoms like fever and fatigue, we use 12C or 12 centesimal medium dilutions. Mean for general symptoms, we only use medium dilutions. While for general and behavioral symptoms like anxiety, depression, grief, sleeplessness, so loneliness and all others related to mind body we use high dilutions in the form of 30 centesimal and higher like uh, econite econite uh, sulfur if i'm not forgetting about it i use for one of my patient who was having uh, anxiety uh, plus depression mixed symptoms were present in that patient so we used 30 centesimal small uh, econite uh, sulfur um, that I don't remember right now. So we used that medicine, me and Dr. Hashmi, and the patient gave his response within two weeks, proper response. And after that, patient was being improved and improved and improved till now. So. It means for uh, advanced symptoms, when symptoms of disease advances uh, longs, we, we can use high dilutions. So moving forward, how a homeopathic medicines will be read? 
when you have to get a homeopathic medicine from a medical store or pharmacy store or drug store, there are some labels. You can see in the picture in the slide, Arnica Montana, 6C. Arnica Montana, when it is being written on the box, it means this is a strain, this is a source from which the medicine is being made. Latin name of the substance I wrote here. I wrote here. So 6 means dilution level, up to 6.6 .6 times you diluted it. And C means dilution scale. It represents dilution scale. So Arnica Montana 6C means Arnica Montana 6 times 6 centesimal means 6 times diluted. Mean its dilution is not so much high, which can or, or, which can arise some side effects among the body of a person, a human, or a living being. So here I mentioned at the end of the slide, C centesimal, centesimal um, thousand million dilutions by one by hundred, and X stands for dilution by one ten. Okay, moving further, like. All other conventional medicines, homeopathic medicines also have some instructions for this state, which is being categorized here in the slide. Like take at the onset of symptoms, mean when you can take a homeopathic medicine when your symptom starts, symptoms of a disease starts then take the medicine. Not beyond that mean you have to keep yourself from rational use of drugs. An illegal use of drugs mean when people are using by their own. It's not right. Because it causes a lot of problems. Right now we are being seen our community around the globe, whether in India, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Europe, America, and all others. People use by themselves and ultimately they face a lot of problems. When they come towards a clinician or a doctor, when they feel much more sadness, much more badness in their behavior, in their, uh, you have to say, in their, um, more young in their body, some reactions which are not. Uh, acceptable for his or her body arose, then he uh, come before, he or she comes before a doctor to attend uh, his treatment, his or her treatment plan. Second, take apart from meals, mean what? Clean your mouth, no mint allowed to dissolve in mouth, mean whenever you have to take a medicine in the form of mint, take it under tongue because it will be dissolved soon. For young children, it may dissolve in water. Mean you can dissolve homeopathic medicine in water and then you can give to your children. Protect homeopathic medicines from excessive heat or cold under 32 degree Fahrenheit or over 115 degree Fahrenheit. Moving next. What is a clinical homeopathy? like clinical allopathy. We all know better that clinically when a person comes before you, you have to categorize his disease symptoms, his history, and all others related. So the individual medicine selected for individual patients based on specific signs and symptoms, first of all, you have to evaluate. Mean you have to take in-depth history of the patient. And then you have to physically examine the patient. And after that, you will come towards diagnosis. And then you will make a plan that allopathic prescription as needed or homeopathic prescription. Which one among these two will be suitable for him? After doing all this clinical evaluation, then you will reach towards the right point. So, continued emphasis on in-depth story, 
in-depth history, sorry. Why so important taking in-depth history of a patient about his, his or her localized symptoms, sensation, symptom analysis, aggravating, mean arousing and alleviating our healing factors like co heat, movement, position, time of day, other associated symptoms, other accompanying and behavioral factors, patient specific reaction to which condition, post medical history, family history, and terror. So these all will be discussed. For a patient, true and in real scientific evaluation and reaching towards the right treatment. So it is similar to conventional system of evaluation like allopathic system of evaluation. So homeopathy also has its scientific evaluation. So people, uh, who, people whom are claiming that this is not a true system of science, now they are being, uh, you have to say, uh, the talks are being cut down here at this point. And now it's real, that's a real science which is based on true evaluation and scientific approach. So towards the second portion of our presentation, that how homeopathy is linked to lifestyle disorders. Dr. Yashika, uh, after a few minutes, two or three minutes, I will uh, start my next portion. If anybody having any question, or you oh, can you. please. Sir, Dr. Javed only wants to know about the right potency. Oh, right potency, of which? Of what, sorry? Choosing the right potency only, rest all is correct. As, and the question you asked, that was only thiol alcohol, ideal alcohol, yeah. and like purified water and distilled water is being used, so. Oh, yeah, 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 preparation. Yeah, Mm -hmm. But I told yeah. you uh, doc, to Dr. Javed, uh, uh, who is uh, Dr. Javed, no better because I told you earlier that this is my first coming towards homeopathy. So I think Dr. Hashmi, you have you can give the answer about right uh, choosing the right potency, how the right pot uh, right potency is being chosen in a homeopathy. Can you tell? What uh, is it? Hmm? For the physical symptoms, okay, we try to choose the low potency. Okay, okay. And for the mental symptoms, hmm. we try to choose the high potencies. Okay, uh, uh, Dr. Yashika, I'm uh, writing the answer of Dr. Javed Akhtar. Sure, sir.
डॉक्टर यशिका हेलो यस यू कैन कंटिन्यू यू कैन कैरी ऑन योर आंसर इज रिसीव फॉर द एन एक्यूट सिम्टम ऑफ ओपेंसी हम्म या while for mental and chronic we use hypertensive yes so yes you can continue yes. sir okay so coming towards the homeopathy and lifestyle disorders lifestyle disorders anybody else will tell me about lifestyle disorders what are the lifestyle disorders anybody else okay so the lifestyle disorders are those disorders Uh, you can say these are non-communicable disease factors, like when a backache develops in a person from acute to chronic stage. Mean from a very uh, you know from a very start towards the long term, uh, it will develop to long term obesity, infertility or sterility, cardiovascular diseases, depression or general anxiety disorder. as early i discussed about it little bit diabetes so these are the common lifestyle diseases how can we cope through using homeopathic system of treatment or overcome first of all we have to define the lifestyle disorders lifestyle disorder a lifestyle disease is defined by who as non communicable diseases we send for non uh also known as chronic diseases tend to be of long duration and are the result of a combination of genetic physiological environmental and behavioral factors different factors uh, if all audience our uh, colleagues are here to this point that non communicable diseases or lifestyle disorders they are not being spread to others they are limited to that person whether male or female who a home is having to eat so this is a combination of genetic mean from parents they got some genes physiological some system uh, disturbances occurred from environment and some mood changes like depression anxiety and other and from environment like you can say smoke which is causing lung cancer and is the most aggravating factor around the globe like is likewise in the capital of afghanistan kabul also it is like delhi in india lahore in pakistan and all other big cities around the globe so main four main types of non communicable diseases we have to discuss cancer cardiovascular or uh, heart diseases like heart stroke copd chronic obstructive pulmonary disease like asthma chronic bronchitis emphysema diabetes like type 2 type 1 type 2 but type 2 is mentioned here which is more aggravating factor so this all come from age and from obesity and from some other like from inheritance or in active lifestyle which group of people are at risk from these diseases as you know all age group members are more affected you can see across the globe 15 million of all deaths due to lifestyle disorders while these disorders are most common in age group of 30 to 69 years old because at this age yeah most common in group i told you and over 85% are estimated to occur in low and middle income countries so dr tanzila khalik i think uh, she is raising the question uh, 
uh, how can we recognize environmental issues like pollution? It's a good question. Environmental pollution, uh, air pollution, you know, due to big, uh, you are due, due to industrialization, uh, all around big cities or big capitals of the world countries, uh, where population is grow growing day by day and uh, the capacity of population mean the capital or the city which is being made for a limited uh, community members and now community members are coming from out to that cities and due to their incoming when traffic you know, traffic uh, being, uh, you know, traffic rush is being more. So when traffic is more, th those ultimately uh, oozing out the ear, uh, the bad ear, which is ultimately uh, making our environment dirty. And due to that dirty environment, we are getting lung cancer, uh, asthma, and all other uh, respiratory diseases. So this is the environmental effect. What are the driving force for causing these diseases? Especially design number one is unclean or unhygienic environment. As I mentioned earlier, due to rapid urbanization, people are leaving rural community and coming to, and they are moving towards the cities. And due to unhealthy diet, globalization of sedentary or inactive lifestyles, people are adopting it more around the globe, lack of physical activity. People are not doing daily exercises at their own places. When they go from their walking site towards homes, they just sleep and they just eat and sleep and then wake up early in the morning, not doing their health, not adopting their healthy habits and coming back towards their uh, job uh, places. So these are the driving factors or driving forces for these diseases. And what are the metabolic risk factors for these diseases? There are four metabolic risk factors for non-communicable diseases. Number one, high blood pressure. Second, obesity or overweight. Third one is hyperglycemia, mean high blood glucose levels due to eating uh, more proteinaceous, more uh, fatty food, junk food, and hyperlipidemia, high level of fat in the blood. So these are metabolic risk factors for these non-communicable or lifestyle disorders or diseases. Metabolic disorders pathway. It's a pathway which is being made. You can see here uh, Dr. Yashika. Dr. Yes, Yashika? sir. Okay. Yes, uh, sir. Could you, could, you, could you help me here, sir, with me? What happened, sir? Kya, uh, what happened? Okay, okay, that's clear. Now that's clear. That's clear. Number one, this is oxygen radical. You have to see oxygen radical in a circle, in a big circle, red circle, the oxygen radical. Mean oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen. These are the bases of what? Organic food materials like proteins, like carbohydrates like uh, lipids and others. So oxygen radical when will be freed like high density lipoprotein dysregulation, glycooxidation, glycolysis, adipocytokines, hormones, antioxidant system downregulation and nitrogen oxygen, unknown activation here. So from here, 
you can say from oxygen when it will meet due in the presence of some catalases. Catalases are those enzymes which regulates the reactants towards products in a chemical reaction, in a food which we are eating, hydrogen peroxide and hydrogen peroxide will be catalyzed in the presence of hydroxylase uh, or catalase enzyme into water plus oxygen, the end products. Likewise, hydrogen peroxide in the presence of DSH uh, will turn towards the enzyme which will get GSSG to GPS, GPX glycolysis and phosphorylation in which one phosphate will be also released to make water. These are the end products of metabolic metabolism of different food items which we use in our daily life. So in hydrogen peroxide it will be chain reactive oxygen species, ROS. Reactive oxygen species, death oxygen, which is available for others to proceed more chemical reactions inside the body cells, like oxidine, uh, hydroxide radical, hydrogen peroxide, reactive oxygen species, uh, peroxychlorate, nitrogen dioxide, or oxygen nitroxide, nitric acid, nitrous oxide, reactive oxygen nitrous oxide, nitric oxide, and nitrogen oxide. The end products of all these will be what? You have to say DNA damage, protein damage, lipid damage will be ultimately leading towards carcinogenesis, obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular complication or disorders. Mean we use different types of food materials, organic food materials. Organic are those anybody among us know better about it that organic, uh, organic chemical substances are those substances which are having carbon, hydrogen and oxygen in its chemical structure as an essential component. So, because ultimately the oxygen will go towards hydrogen to form a water and carbon will be degraded. Ultimately, all cell structures, internal cell structures are being made of these organic uh, substances. So, which we, if we use junk food in the form of protein, dairy, or fat, and others, it, it ultimately leads us towards some cardio, some, um, you have to say some lifestyle disorders. I mentioned you earlier, carcinogenesis is a cancer, type of cancer, obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular complications. Okay, moving next, the metabolic syndrome. What is a syndrome? Anybody among us can tell me about syndrome, the term syndrome? Dr. Yashika? Dr. Yashika? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is a syndrome? Can, I, can you tell me? Sir, a group of uh, the diseases together, or you can say group of symptoms together, yes, together. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. So, thanks, uh, thanks Dr. Yashika, for your cooperation. Um, syndrome is basically a term used for a group of diseases, not only one disease, a group of disorders, a group of diseases, a collection of diseases that's called syndrome. So metabolic syndrome, the syndrome which resulting from metabolism of different food products, ultimately resulting in obesity, heart diseases, and you have to say diabetes, pancreatic disorders, and all others. So here we can see this is a man, different symptoms like heart disease, lipid problems, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, dementia. Dementia is a mental disorder, is a neurological disorder. And if a person sometimes knows someone and sometimes doesn't. Memory loss. 
cancer, polycystic ovary syndrome, or ovarian syndrome, POS in females. Ovarian syndrome, right? Many cysts are being formed inside the ovaries of females and non-alcoholic fatty liver diseases. Mean a person is not using or consuming alcohol, but then his liver being disordered, being damaged. Why? Because due to different, uh, due to intake of junk of uh, mm, food sources in the form of protein, uh, in the form of uh, fats. And ultimately, he is he or she is not consuming his energy, that energy which he's getting from that food item. Why? Because he or she is sitting a lot of time at his desk, or at his chair, and working before a uh, computer or laptop, and working in office. These people are getting these disorders. So non-modifiable or non-changeable risk factors of which. Number one is age, which is not changeable. Heredity, inheritance, we are inheriting genes from our peers and ethnicity, gender. These four factors are non-changeable, are non-modifiable risk factors for what? For lifestyle disorders. And the modifiable risk factors which a person can change in his or her routine life, like diet, diet you can you can you can change your diet plan. You can change your uh, diet plan by making it balanced diet. Take it a little bit from every source of uh, food, and then you can make a balanced diet for yourself, which will give you a healthy life. Second, body weight management. We have to manage our body weight, not to increase it, not to raise it, by doing some proper exercises, by eating less fatty materials, by eating less proteinaceous materials. Third one is the level of physical activity. The activities, which kind of physical activities, which we are performing at which level, and our exposure to sun is that problem? Half an hour, according to international standards, before coming to sun every day, or getting sun bath for half an hour is essential for every living being. So that its vitamin and all calcium levels will be optimized, will be balanced. Why? Because sunlight or rays are a stimulant for that. And then stopping, stopping smoking and alcohol. So these can be changed. These are in the hands of a human being. Also, we can decrease our stress and other related psychosocial factors or psychological factors. Next, <clears throat> this is a diagram uh, especially made to show some cardiovascular disease, uh, its aggravating factors and antidotes for that. Uh, here you can see metabolic disorders, oxidative stress will stimulate metabolic disorder. Antipsychotic drugs when a person uses for a long term because we are seeing in our daily life that people use psychotic drugs, anti-psychotic drugs for a long time to get not a real happiness but a false happiness because for a little bit of time they feel calm but this is not good. An unhealthy lifestyle means waking late, uh, sleeping late night, uh, not doing proper exercises. So these all will aggravate metabolic disorders. 
and genetic factors. So these four are those factors which play main role on metabolic disorders and ultimately will lead towards weight gain and hypertension, uh, impaired glucose and lipid metabolism and with ages accumulation of all these factors will like anti-obesity drugs, anti-diabetic drugs will be weight gain and hypertension will cause weight gain and hypertension and impaired glucose and lipid metabolism. And antioxidants will also impair glucose and lipid metabolism while age is inhibitors, not age, is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. These are conventional medicines used in as an anti-hypertensive medicines for hypertension and different heart problems. So ACE is accumulation, mean aggregate will be there, will be leading, ultimately these three will lead towards cardiovascular disorders or diseases. Smoking, this is a message, smoking is dangerous to our health or your health or anybody's health. Like why? Because when you smoke pulmonary thromboembolism, a clot inside pulmonary arteries or pulmonary veins will form for a little bit time or some smoke or some cloud will form there, will ultimately lead towards pulmonary problems. And then the destruction of tooth enamel. Those people who are using uh, cigarettes uh, for the whole day are mean, uh, they are smoking very much. So their teeth, if you, feel, if you see, those will be, uh, the enamel will be, uh, or the enamel will be uh, destroyed or, as, or will be uh, of no use. Mean their teeth will have some other picture, some other shape, bad shape. So stroke, smoking is also a cause of stroke and it is also myocardial infarction a heart problem in which supply of oxygen to through coronary arteries towards target place when occur and congenital malformations in children or in neonates or in infants or a childbearing age who is smoking more, her child, her child's condition, physical condition will be malformed. This is called congenital malformation. So these are the uh, dangers or uh, dangers or risks of cigarette smoking or smoking to human health. Nicotine addiction and cancer, health risks of smoking, anybody among us know, one out of two, one out of two, long-term smoker will die from tobacco, mean every one out of two persons will die from smoke, why, because that person is using a cigarettes for a long term and ultimately that cigarette which contains nicotine as a chemical component in itself will destroy with the passage of time alveoli, the sacs, ear sacs inside the lungs and the person's lungs in a, an X-ray in a PA view, posterior to anterior view, actually if you have seen the shape of both lungs will disappear and that will be seen like a cloud of smoke is there. So cuts five minutes of life, any smoking or nicotine addiction, which is the leading cause of cancer, also cuts five minutes of our human life on an average. 
And it is a single largest preventable cause of disease and premature death. 4,000 toxic or carcinogenic materials or chemicals are present in a cigarette. One out of four heart diseases victims and three out of four chronic bronchitis system are smokers. Mean every person, uh, mean one of, out of every four persons who are having heart problems, that will be a smoker. And three out of every four person who is having chronic bronchitis, I mean, uh, a, sim uh, a disease, a disorder of lungs in which person feels shortness of breath, uh, wheezing, bronchi, short sounds, and phlegm, productive cough. So if you see these guys coming to your clinics, then on an average, if you count it, on your register, you will find that every third out of four is a smoker. So benefits of quitting smoking, every person among us know better. Long-term and short-term benefits to quit smoking. After quit, quitting for 20 minutes, an individual's heart and blood pressure decreases. If a person is having heart diseases and blood pressure, the reduction will come in that after every, after quitting for 20 minutes. For two or three weeks, circulation and lung functionally, functionality will be improved. For one year, the risk of coronary heart disease, a CHD, and heart attack is reduced or diminished. After 10 years, the risk of mortality from lung cancer is 50% less likely compared with a Current smokers' risk, pancreas and larynx cancer risk are also decreased. If 22, you know, for 12 hours, the body's carbon monoxide levels return to healthy levels. For one to nine months, lungs continue to improve and heal, reducing coughing and shortness of breath. And for five years, the risk of mouth, throat, esophageal, and bladder cancer are decreased by how? The risk of cervical cancer and stroke declined to that of a non-smoker. And for 15 years, the risk of coronary disease equates to that of a non-smoker. So these are the benefits. Paradigm shift for lifestyle disorders. Work culture. We have to change our working culture. How we are working, what are working plans, and all of us. And home appliances, food culture should also be changed. Playing culture should be changed to reduce lifestyle disorders. So role of homeopathy and non-communicable diseases are lifestyle disorders. See, homeopathic aphorism. Number 252, you know, again, but should we find during the employment of the other medicines are used of other medicines in chronic disease or solid diseases in homeopathy is called that the best selected homeopathic or antisoric medicine in the suitable or minutest dose doesn't affect an improvement. This is a sure sign that the cause that keeps up the disease still persists and that there is some circumstances in the mood of life of the patient or in the situation in which he is placed, that must be removed in order that a permanent cure may ensure. So, according to this aphorism, mean the lowest amount of homeopathic drug, though the subside is high, but not still that is present there. Mean for that a continued uh, thing is required. A continual evaluation is required. 259, what it says, considering the minuteness of the doses necessary and proper in homeopathic treatment, we can easily understand that during the treatment, everything must be removed from the diet and regimen, which can have any medicinal action in order that the small dose may not be overwhelmed. Or uh, you have to say overwhelmed or Mm, removed and extinguished or disturbed by any foreign medicinal irritant or stimulant. Next, 255. But even with such individuals, we may convince 
ourselves on this point by going with them through all the symptoms enumerated in our notes of the disease one by one and finding they complain of no new unusual symptoms in addition to these and that none of the old symptoms are worse if this be the case and if any improvement in the disposition and mind have already been observed the medicine must have affected positive diminution of the disease or if sufficient time hasn't yet elapsed for that it will soon affect it now supposing the remedy is perfectly appropriate if the improvement delay too long in making its appearance this depends either on some error of conduct on the part of the patient or on other interfering circumstances so in homeopathy for every reason 265th edition said that careful investigation into such obstacle hindrances to cure a treatment is so much the more necessary in the case of patients affected by chronic diseases not by acute diseases as their diseases are usually raised or aggravated by such noxious influences a stimulants and other disease causing errors in the diet and regimen which often pass unnoticed mean not considered like coffee fine chinese and other herb teas beer prepared with medicinal vegetable substance and suitable for the patient state so called fine liquid made with medicinal spices diet and regimen a reason to diet and regimen all kinds of punch spice chocolates or rice water and perfumes of many kinds strong scented flowers in the apartment tooth powders and essences and perfume sachets compounded of drugs mixed with drugs highly spiced dishes and sauces spiced cakes and ices crude medicinal vegetables for soaps dishes of herbs roots and stalks of plants possessing medicinal qualities asparagus with long green tips hops and all vegetable possessing medicinal properties celery onions or cheese and meats that are in a state of decomposition or that possess medicinal properties as the flesh and fat of pork ducks and geese a veal that is too young and so viands how just as certainly to be kept from patient as they should avoid all excess excesses in food so change in diet and regimen is necessary as always in conventional medicine uh, for a patient is advised similarly for homeopathic system of treatment also advises to patients uh, to change their diet plan and regimen okay moving from this uh, and in use of sugar and salt as also spiritual drinks and diluted with water heated rooms with clothing next the skin a sedentary or inactive lifestyle in close apartments or the frequent indulgence in mere passive exercises such as riding driving or swinging lawn cycling taking a long siesta sleeping or recumbent posture in bed sitting up long at night uncleanliness unnatural debauchery a dishonesty in our vision by reading of seen books or vulgar books reading while lying down so change it onanism or imperfect or suppressed into coercing order to prevent conception subjects of anger or grief or vexation a passion for play or exertion of the mind or body especially after meal dwelling in marshy districts damp rooms penurious living all these things must be as far as possible avoided or removed in order that the cure may not be obstructed or hindered or rendered impossible lifestyle change recommendation first balanced diet we all know if a human uses balanced diet his life his average life prolongs for more years why because balanced diet will play an important role in maintaining all bodily functions in a human body to cope to cope different diseases so in a balanced diet what should we use uh in a blue color 
These are fruits and vegetables. 40% in our diet should be fruits and vegetables. While in deep blue, what I have to say in purple, purple color, yeah? In a purple color, uh, fats, 10% should be fat in our diet. While 25% should be protein and 25% fiber rich carbohydrates should be there. Yeah, Dr. Yashika. Dr. Yashika. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah I'm here, sir. Okay. okay. So, uh, I think uh, uh, my slides are near to end. Uh, after the ending of my slides, uh, we will come towards our audiences, what they say. So in lifestyle changes, those factors which influence or affect attitude formation, like experience, social roles and norms are in those, classical and operant conditioning, observing people in environment, these are the things. Positive effect. Positive effect will be raised if and stress will be decreased. When stress will be decreased, B and C, healthy behavior will be developed and physiological activation will decrease more to disease environment. These are those changes. If we change our lifestyle, uh, we can see very positive effects in our daily life. And we will be more more far from diseases than to near. These are the different pictures. You can use uh, greenery, go to greenery uh, environment, uh, greener places. Like in this picture, exercises, different exercises are mentioned in pictures. And a person who is sitting in the room and seeing a very beautiful environment through her window outside that ultimately affects her uh, intellectual behavior, her mind, and will give her more calm and rest, and more be beyond her from diseases, more far from diseases. So health belief model, this is a model which is being uh, made here. Behavioral intention, which is intention in every person's life is essential. A form intention about any work. So see from health belief model one, what it says, self-efficacy. Mean proving her or himself. We make towards behavioral intention and will make it more form. If you will be self, in, 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 you, mean in your own behavior, the change will be more. Then you can get a good behavioral intention, age 10. Okay, from here, if we have taught age two, these are the perceived benefits which will age eight towards, towards behavioral intention and age two and age one perceived barriers, those barriers that will be crossed and the person who, who is he or she will get a good belief, will, uh, will uh, move her or uh, him towards uh, successful, uh, you have to say, intentions or successful plannings. Health knowledge, like uh, health knowledge cues to action. If you have more health knowledge, means you are more uh, uh, you are more powerful against different uh, diseased environment because you are knowing how to tackle the situation. Social support will also make in the form of perceived benefits and cues to action. Both 
And all these, like perceived susceptibility, perceived severity, perceived benefits, perceived barriers, cues to action, will lead toward behavioral intention, age 10 and 12, and will ultimately make a good belief, a good intention, a good intention, a time intention, will lead you towards good health. Amalgation or mixing. So taking homeopathic knowledge and modern lifestyle modification to decrease lifestyle diseases or disorders. We are in this belief, especially me and all other you and all others who are working around the globe, uh, especially in homeopathy, they are in this belief that through homeopathic mode of treatment or homeopathic mode of knowledge, we can decrease or overcome to different non-communicable diseases or lifestyle disorders. These are the references from different sources. We got these materials, literature from www.ncbi.nlm.nih.government, www.webmd.com, uh, www.homeopathyusa.org, www.nhs.uk, www.lifescience.com, www.who.intinternational, homeopathysoh.org, and at the end, especially, uh, I will say, bundle of thanks to our very, very uh, intelligent and talented uh, colleague, Dr. Arpita Chatterjee, uh, because she is not having website, but I just only brought her email ID to thanks for cooperation. So thank you to all of you who gave the valuable time to our today's webinar to make it more valuable. And uh, on behalf of Afghanistan, Homeopathic Medical Association. I especially thanks to Dr. Yashika Arora, editing manager, BJN Publishers, uh, and 360 Homeopathy, uh, and to all other uh, our sponsors and colleagues from around the globe who made this presentation valuable and knowledgeable to others. Thank you, Dr. Yashika. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for such a wonderful presentation and interactive session. I, I think all the queries of the doctors and uh, participants resolved uh, at the same moment. Uh, we can have a discussion if still there are queries left. Uh, there is a query, sir, in post-COVID era. Can you suggest some lifestyle-related remedies? Yeah, in post-COVID era, because I worked as a COVID-19 hospital director here in Afghanistan because we faced different uh, problems facing these patients uh, because the disease is very new, human life is very disturbed by this new kind of enemy. So we have to change our lifestyle in a, this a way that keep distancing, washing our hands, uh, when we uh, go to our office work or any other our residents or anywhere, anywhere where we uh, meet to our colleagues and our community members. So we should uh, keep in our mind those preventions, which are especially designed uh, by WHO and other uh, stakeholders around the globe, including our homeopathy uh, organizations that stay at home if this outbreak is uh, coming for the next time more and more. But how can you help your uh, community members just uh, by keeping them at home, not to meeting in a gathering, by washing their hands regularly, uh, by, um, by eating balanced diet, which I mentioned in my slide, uh, like 10% fat, 25% protein, 40% uh, uh, vegetable and fruits by eating more fruits and 20 and some percentage which uh, I forgot right now 
So by keeping balanced diet, keeping distance, washing hands, uh, not coming in a lot of gatherings, and all those scenarios which are designed for uh, COVID-19, then we can uh, uh, we can serve our community better. And in a post-COVID era, uh, these are the lifestyle modification that uh, we have to change our lifestyle. Like what? Do our daily exercises, but keeping those standards in our mind, which was uh, I mentioned earlier uh, by WHO and other, and uh, uh, all other office work, our housework, and daily life activities. Then we can cope. Uh, this virus uh, very, very successfully and in post-COVID era, I hope, inshallah, that uh, our homeopathic mode of system, uh, I, which, I, uh, which I read in different articles, uh, different scientists around the globe uh, are especially working to make some better remedies to overcome this uh, uh, problem, uh, COVID-19. Uh, so I think uh, uh, what I have to say that uh, I will say thanks to them that they are doing uh, day and night work for the community, for the human community around the globe. So I think by keeping uh, our mark, keeping in mind standards of life, we can uh, we can live better life in a post-COVID era. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. I read the audience. Please post your queries if you have any from Sir and Lucas. By the time, I'll just announce that tomorrow we're having Dr. Javed Akhtar, sir, from Pakistan. Uh, Where is he? Where he'll be is he? teaching you tomorrow. So. Where is Dr. Sir, uh, he is in the uh, he is in the uh, attendees link. He's atten uh, he is attending the webinar from attendee session, not from the back end session. Okay, uh, Dr. Yashika, can uh, can we uh, can we uh, this is this will be my uh, suggestion. Not uh, you know uh, because I'm, I am request my request that can we uh, do a program like this that all participants who are participating in the webinar, whether those are in attendee section or other, can take part, can take their participation, approve their participation uh, by uh, talking or by group uh, without... Yes, group sir, we have, an option. we have an option here also. If I allow uh, them to we can we can wait if we have Dr. Yashika? Hello? Sorry, I had some connectivity too. Uh, I was saying that we can for a bit of voice comes in today. I'm already him to speak. If he is there with us, he can be in a lot. So, discuss. Still, questions in the chat box. We can discuss because I cannot see any. 
डॉक्टर यशिका थैंक यू सो मच सर फॉर द आंसर यस सर द आंसर इज वैरेंसिलिन चैंटिक्स इन एलोपैथी फॉर 2 वीक्स एंड ब्यूप्रोपियन फॉर 7 टू 12 वीक्स ओके सर यू सजेस्ट सर या लिसन टू मी लिसन टू मी बट yeah listen to me yeah i'm saying to you one thing else over here that these are you know these are anti psychiatric or anti psychotic drugs right uh so when you use these drugs first of all the person a patient uh, the person who wants to quit smoking should consult the qualified uh, homeopath or allopath whatever else and a person who should have some knowledge in mental disorders why because he knows better he or she knows better by the psychological point of view the moments the uh, different uh, styles adopted by that smoker so that how to overcome or this problem right so these are the things uh without consultation i think uh these have some side effects but not more but it depends upon the person how much he or she can bear it right hello hello yes sir thank you so much i think there are no more queries from the audience we can find up with the session but tomorrow we have dr jagat in us at few o'clock tomorrow ha and thank you so much sir for your time as well as such a nice interactive session for this um, series thank you so much and i also want to thank audience for their patience thank you so much sir thank you thank you to you thank you especially to you dr yashika arora that you meant and you managed this uh, webinar Uh, very smoothly from uh, i think a couple of weeks ago you were arranging and you were designing all these uh, modalities and methodologies for this webinar and uh, you uh, even you collected all these guys from all over the globe so i think the whole credit goes to uh, you uh, homeopathy 360 bj and publishers i don't know the who is the person behind and uh, all other my colleagues who are from all around the world or globe attended and gave the valuable time to this presentation this webinar made it so much valuable for community members to uh, be beneficial for them so hope inshallah uh, i'll be in touch with you as your member for my upcoming or next webinars if they're designed thank you sir i would uh, i am overwhelmed and uh, you you are such a uh, uh, such a nice person and a uh, nice person to know and uh, i think we had a great session so thank you so much sir i'll end the session now can i sorry end the session now i didn't hear proper hello yeah sir can i end the session now yeah Can we end the session now? Okay, okay, go, go, go. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. Assalamualaikum. Namaste to all. Khuda Hafiz.